uh, done in cooperation and collaboration with the uh, uh, BFG Center and uh, Anadolu University in Turkey. And it's about uh, assimilating some of the HSAF products into a rainfall runoff uh, model, more specifically using the HPV model. And so the objectives, uh, first objective is about the uh, implementation of a generic framework that would allow us uh, to somehow combine the hydrological models with the remote sense products that uh, are captured by the HSAF community. Um, the next uh, objective was also to apply this uh, framework, of course, to, to the, to the HSAF uh, products themselves and make some tests and experiments uh, on Germany and, and Turkey, more specifically um, two test sites in Germany and one in, in Turkey. I will give some explanation on them. And the uh, third objective was about the potential extension of this knowledge to more HSAF uh, partners, to additional partners, and to um, somehow, well, share our experiences with, uh, with the HSAF community. Mm, in terms of uh, data simulation, we've used a uh, moving horizon estimation uh, method. We're talking, well, we're basically using it because it allows us a very flexible um, configuration of some of the setups, so some of the uh, terms. and. Um, it basically also it's able to to handle very large time lags uh, between forcing and response. This is this is especially relevant, for instance, when looking at the snow during uh, autumn or winter and trying to update these values for for the springtime. So we need a large time window to make these updates, and this is something that can be allowed with with the moving horizon estimation using variational methods. Um, also, well, it gives a flexible formulation of uh, generally of the norms uh, in terms of the observed or the agreement between observed um, values and simulated values. And um, well, and in terms of uh, hydrological models, we've decided to use an HPV model and SRM. Uh, the first one has uh, been used already by the DFG in uh, federal. Institute of Hydrology of Germany, and um, and the implementation of these models, well, in terms of variational methods, require a dedicated um, implementation to to obtain the adjoint models, which is uh, basically a a computation of the gradient of the objective function to to be able to optimize the problem. So, um, okay. More uh, from a technical perspective or which software uh, we're using to do this, uh, we're using RTC Tools, which is an open strings library, uh, has been developed by, by, by Deltares, and uh, it includes an embedded uh, optimizer, which is IPOPT. Um, well, in, it's, uh, it's uh, one of the advantages in this case is the interface with uh, Delft Views and uh, OpenDA. It's relatively easy to integrate this. This platform it was developed in C++, and uh, well, it's uh, still um, it's uh, currently continuously, I would say, extending uh, capabilities and and, and features. Um, the model integration platform was uh, chosen was self use. It uh, has been already implemented in several countries and uh, for operational forecasting systems. It's been uh, in the UK, in fact, uh, they've uh, been used by. Uh, Environmental agency in the United States and so on. Um, of course, one of the advantages is that also it's uh, freely available to to end uh, users. So that's that's very highly appreciated. Um, our approach of the problem has been uh, then somehow set up in a modular approach. So it's, uh, we have a first uh, data model integration platform, which is in this case Fuse, but we can use other dedicated uh, implementations. Uh, we also have uh, our data simulation uh, model, which uh, has been carried out by, by RTC tools, but also some alternatives is to use OpenDA, for example, or MATLAB prototypes and so on. And it communicates also with the uh, hydrological models, which are also integrated in RTC tools, as I said, because they need a dedicated implementation to compute the, the, the first derivatives. But what is um, what is the variational data simulation? It's uh, well, it's basically a um, a simulation over a certain period, uh, 
and you make an update of the of some of the parameters and and using this simulation you create a, a mathematical expression that then you will be able to to optimize so this mathematical expression includes the terms which you're looking to try to match and uh, and also trying to include terms that will penalize these changes um, then once this is done and once you've obtained the optimization then you apply these assimilated states and, and use them as input for, for a forecast. In our case, what we're looking for is to, to improve lead time and, and of, of our simulations. And, and then repeat the procedure for, for the next time step. So here we have an assimilation period. This is our, our time zero. With these uh, results, we generate a forecast. And then we move forward on the next time steps and so on and so on and so on in what it's called the moving horizon estimation. I don't think uh, uh, it needs an introduction or a very highly uh, detailed explanation. We've used the HPV model. Basically, uh, it includes uh, among the states the soil moisture, the upper zone, uh, which is this one here, and the lower zone here. Uh, I mean, that's been already explained by some other of the other presenters. The, the inputs, uh, okay, it's relevant. It's uh, temperature, precipitation, and evapotranspiration, those are the main inputs, and of course calibration parameters. From a mathematical perspective, our uh, HPV model is uh, implemented as a function, well, these, uh, these are state variables that depend on some inputs, and then we obtain, um, uh, okay, these are the states. When we obtain an output variable, um, also depending on the states and, and some of the inputs as well, and this is expressed by linear or nonlinear uh, functions, which are representing, in this case, an HPV model, could be any other hydrological model. Okay. And, um, and very important, we have some noise vectors, which are the ones that uh, allow us the update of the, of the procedure. In, um, well, just to explain very briefly, this is our objective function. This is an expression of several terms in which you look for the agreement or the match between uh, observations and simulations here. So these are our observations and these are our simulation uh, variables. This could be discharge, but it could also be the snow water equivalent or snow coverage area or soil moisture or even uh, any other variables. So in this case, what we're looking at is the comparison with the remote sense products. Uh, as I said, the hydrogen models are uh, especially required to make the optimization run more efficiently. So that's part of the uh, complicated or yeah, difficulties of the implementation. The, um, this is uh, just to summarize a bit the uh, uh, implementations of the different terms into the objective function that has been used in the, in the project. So we have model inputs, to <coughs> precipitation temperature, we have uh, a snow component and we have all this uh, rest of the states. And um, what we look here is to um, try to make the match between the, the products of uh, eight staff, like this one here and this one here, also by including the term of the discharge and then giving some penalization to the, to the input or to the update variables. So we want to make the best, uh, best uh, achieve the best performance, but we don't want to change it uh, so much. Let's move to the to the test sites that we've um, okay that we've uh, tested that we've uh, implemented. We have three three catchments, as I said, two in Germany. Uh, the first one, Nye catchment, around 1,500 uh, square kilometers. The second one is the mine catchment of uh, 2,400, and the third one is in uh, Turkey. It's called the Karasu catchment. It's much much bigger and it uh, has an area of 10,000 square kilometers. They have different characteristics, different, uh, of course, elevations, and so on. The HPV model for each uh, case, they've, well, we've implemented different elevation zones with different land uses. They're following the configuration that has been also implemented in BFG in the case of, uh, of the German catchments and configuration by uh, the Turkish partners in, in, in Karasu. So we have a very, very extensive uh, period of, uh, for calibrating uh, the models. From the German perspective, we have 44 years of calibration, five years of validation, and we achieved um, very, very high 
values of Nash Sutcliffe already with this with these two models. Uh, even in the validation, you see that we have Nash Sutcliffe efficiencies of 0.85, 0.87. The Karasu catchment is uh, okay, it's behaving well, but of course the availability of uh, data is more limited and it takes uh, model calibration a bit not uh, well, not not so not so good. So what are uh, how how are we what are we doing with this this catchment? We've carried out three experiments. The first one is about the model potential for data simulation, how much the model can or the the whole setup can can improve the the simulator runoff. Um, and we're looking ahead always, trying to to look into the benefit on lead times and the benefit on over enough over a given forecast. Um, also, the second experiment is well, how much in theory can the HSAP products can can improve the the forecasts? And uh, this is done by assuming perfect conditions uh, which have been generated from a simple simulation of a of a model. And, uh, and the third one is uh, about the practical benefits. Okay, well, let's use real data from HSAF products and see, see how, how this behaves. So let's move to the first experiment. In this case, we've uh, allowed a very large variation of, of variables. We're looking into the, the um, minimization of the stream flow uh, deviation. So we're giving a lot of emphasis to, this, uh, to these variables. And of course, well, this proves somehow that the procedure is working well. Without data simulation, you see that we had these NAS suitcase efficiencies. And this is, of course, somehow expected because you're allowing the maximum variation or the maximum update of, of uh, variables of, uh, of both of the input and of the state of the HPV model to, to try to fit the observed discharge. So it's, it's an experiment of how much, uh, how, how well this uh, this setup is, is working, and in our case, well, it's, it's proven that it's, uh, it's uh, giving us the, the right um, yeah, the right simulation. Also, some interesting facts here is that uh, the closer the variable to the to the final response to the output, well, the best uh, it gets to to the simulation, or the, the highest the impact over the assimilation procedure. And so we see that, for example, the lower zone has a um, or the, the upper and lower zones in, in combination have a very high um, impacts over some of the some of the other um, um, variables. This is I'm going to show it in a uh, later slide as well. So uh, we've allowed these uh, extensive modifications and it's working well. The modifications of the states, uh, as I mentioned, well they're closer to the they are closer to the response lead to better agreements uh, of the simulation and observed uh, runoff. And, um, and this gives us some hints on, 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 the, on how to, to address the problem later on. The um, data simulator, uh, simulation procedure has been working well. We've uh, even done 40 years of, uh, of a simulation run, and this is uh, perfectly possible under a variational assimilation procedure. And well, we have a very high computational performance, so let's move on to the Heinkast experiments and see what this is telling us on, on, on a forecast. So on a forecast, um, the ones that are uh, giving us better performance is this one, these two, which are exactly the, okay, the upper zone and the lower zone. In some of the cases, variating, for example, the temperature really doesn't doesn't make any difference, or even it makes the uh, the, uh, the procedure even worse. So uh, it doesn't really lead to better um, to better lead times. And this is also the case in the, in night catchment, also with a much higher um, the, um, behavior of the soil moisture in this case. And also in Karasu catchment, they're all behaving relatively, relatively similar. Um, to when I have time? To ten. How much time we have? I have ten minutes? Something like this. Okay. So the second experiment is about the potential benefit of the HSAF product. We've generated a perfect time series using a, a simulation of a model, and uh, and then this uh, perfect time series have been compared with. Um, uh, with the noisy data that has been 
fictitiously introduced into the model and see how much this could eventually uh, this could eventually uh, improve the forecast. So here's an example of how this behaved. This is in March 20, 2006. And um, here we have different behaviors of the snow water equivalent for different forecasts. So we start with a forecast on the 23rd of, of March. Then the next day, the snow water equivalent already, the simulation already decreased. The 25th, it's already again decreasing. And you see there's the impact of, of uh, the assimilation when using only this charge is giving us all these uh, very high variations on the forecast. So why not using the, the perfect uh, or the, like, the rest of the variables, the rest of the remote sense variables to, to try to make this, this better? So in this case, what we're doing is to give the emphasis on the soil moisture. And you see it's regardless of, of, uh, of the day in which you're really looking into the forecast, you get very, very nice agreements and, and better, much better performance in terms of forecast. This is, uh, again, use, uh, we put it into a Heimkass experiment. And in here, we make the comparisons of, two, of the two catchments in, in Germany. Um, the blue line is, sorry, the, the red line is the agreement or the um, assimilation on, on this stretch. And then the blue line is the assimilation using the remote sense products or the perfect time series. And this shows us, okay, there's a, uh, there's a, an improvement. This is an improvement uh, of, uh, of mean absolute uh, error. There's an improvement, but not really that much. We, we're talking about this, this, uh, uh, lead times are well, relative, not really making a, a strong difference. Also, in the night catchment, we've seen some some gain after the fourth day, but okay, not not that much. So this is telling okay, the, the model is already behaving quite well, and uh, and even using perfect observations of the remote sense products, we could not gain that much from from the from the lead times. The third experiment is about uh, using the real-time, real data from, from HSAF uh, observations, and we've implemented the, or we've included the H10 uh, product, the H12, the H13, and the H14. Um, I, I think I'm going to skip the procedure by the, each of the products because it's, it's uh, a bit restricted on time. Let's move to the practical issues. We've, um, we have some practical, well, with um, practical issues with the German ca catchments in particular because they suffer from cloud coverage. This is the case in the, in the Turkish uh, basin. We've seen this is a comparison between the MODIS and the H10. And this is quite quite good. You don't you don't get very nice results, I would say. Um, of course, this continues. But when looking at the mine catchment, then you cannot really do that much because there's always a cloud coverage, and that's uh, parts of the problem. Uh, that we've that we've faced with the implementation of the HSAF information. This is some examples about how how the data simulation procedure changed between using a uh, an assimilation um, of this charge and making an assimilation with with uh, so moisture. So this is again one of the catchments in Germany. We, in this case, we've uh, we've made the agreement or the simulation assimilation. Uh, using this stretch, and you see here's the forecast without the discharge, uh, without data simulation, the green line, and the forecast uh, without, uh, uh, this one is with the data simulation, and this one is with, without data simulation. Uh, but here, the soil moisture is totally lost. In this case, the H, uh, this is the H14 um, line, and these are just the simulations uh, from, from, the, from the procedure. So they're, they're very, different from the ones that we've seen in, in H14. By giving the uh, agreement to the soil moisture, then our assimilated variable of the soil moisture, this was a conventional uh, simulation without data simulation. This is now the assimilation with, uh, with the soil moisture. And then this is the improved forecast uh, uh, that we get uh, from, from making this, this match that meets this fit. This is always not always the case. Of course, sometimes you get degradation. And here's another case, uh, of course, applied in winter. This uh, doesn't make sense, but then the procedure behaves in a, in a much different uh, way. We have a forecast without data simulation, forecast with data simulation. And when you include the 
a simulation using soil moisture, then you get a degradation. Okay. We run, again, Heimkast experiments on ditch basin, and, um, and we've seen that, well, the agreement or the uh, assimilation over discharge is uh, always better than the assimilation with the HSAF products in this case. Mm -hmm. the H, uh, the remote sense products are, are making our, our lead times not, or performance not, not really an improvement over them. So this is a bit of a, uh, uh, well, uh, I, I would say it was not so expected. And, uh, uh, okay, but that's the case in mine. That's uh, the case in, in Nile, and that's the case in Karasu. What we've seen also is that in mine and nine, that the, there's a difference between both, and it's much greater than the uh, than the case in Karasu. This means, well, in Karasu, we are somehow very close to how as, how much you can gain in, in this stretch. But what what really we're not looking at the whole picture here because we are missing the information of forecast over the rest of the state variables. What's happening with the rest of the model? What's happening with the snow? Um, uh, with the future snow uh, projections, what's happening with the, with the projections or the forecast of the soil moisture and so on. So we've looked into the, the simulation of the rest of the, the state variables and we've seen here, for example, this is the, uh, a simulation using this chart. And you see that, well, we have the H14 product here, the soil moisture, and we have this very high uh, difference between the forecast uh, soil moisture and the simulate the assimilated for, uh, for the soil moisture. We have the forecast here, and by looking into the simulated, um, uh, by the assimilation of the, including the assimilation of the soil moisture as well into the objective function, then we get a much better, a much better agreement into the soil moisture. So this is telling us, well, we've lost a bit on the, on the capability of the system to forecast uh, this stretch, but this is how much we're gaining in terms of soil moisture. The same happens with the NIA catchment. I don't want to extend it too much, but you see here there's this huge difference between observed and simulated uh, variables, and this is the improvement that you get for, for soil moisture. And similar case in Karasu, in this case, since we had also the snow products, then we could also include the, the snow information. So the first graph is this stretch, the second one is the soil, snow coverage, uh, snow water equivalent, and soil moisture. And here, for example, in terms of uh, snow cover area, it's already behaving well by using a simulation of a discharge. But look at the snow water equivalent. It's not really matching with the, with the projected or the forecast of the, of, of the future. And here is the soil moisture. By including this, these uh, variables and now making the, the assimilation with the rest of the components, we get a much better agreement here and much better agreement of the soil moisture in the future. And with and in terms of discharge, we're not really modifying it that much. So this is quite interesting. Conclusions, well, we've implemented the generic and uh, modular test bed for assimilating the extra products into a rainfall runoff uh, model, HPV. We've, um, we've used a data simulation by moving horizon estimation. This requires a dedicated uh, model and adjunct models. And um, the application using the perfect forcing uh, the variables shows potential benefits of using the HSAF products and the performance metric, metrics that are based only on this structure, they're really not showing the significant improvements because, um, well, we're not looking at what happens with the rest of the state variables or the rest of the model variables. So that's the case in the snow water equivalent and soil moisture, which uh, probably are very relevant for hydropower utilities and uh, farmers and so on. HSAF products have a greater impact, and that's something that was said in also in the previous talk, uh, over that as far as environments, and uh, especially in this case, well, we can implement it into the operational methods uh, very, in a very flexible way, and that's also quite nice. I think that addresses a bit the problem that, that was also presented in the, nice, in the last talk. Next steps of the, of the work is the refinement of existing framework, uh, review of it, the extension of the HSAF uh, data, including additional data sources like MODIS. Uh, we're interested or we'll be looking at the, making a transition to a other type of models, not only looking at the HDB, but also maybe looking at the semi-distributed or distributed models. 
Um, probably there will be an implementation of a test case as well in Poland, so that's also a, a plus that we can uh, put in our checklist. And then uh, um, making the assessment of different data simulation techniques on Monday, someone said that uh, this whole thing about data simulation is like looking at a cookbook, a cooking book, and looking at different ingredients. And so this, this is part of the ingredients that we have to include in the cooking book. The open assimilation, what well, we've, we've looked into is having, in general, an open assimilation framework for implementing the HSAT uh, products, but also it can be easily extended to additional information. And, um, well, we're looking for further collaboration in, German, in case uh, anyone is, uh, finds it interesting and uh, finds that this uh, test case uh, can be applied on, on your uh, specific uh, yeah, basin or whatever, then we're looking forward to continue collaborating into the HSAF community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Rome. Um one quick question, are you ready? Yes. Over there. Over there. Mm -hmm. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, I was wondering about the use of the norms, the zero word management that use mm -hmm. from all the other two, which will be short to a forty five okay. Yeah. Well, only with on this morning, this is because of the observation that would be leading to use one norm or the other. So I was wondering about the efficiency of the norms and the observation and which norms where you specifically Yes, absolutely. We into looking at these uh, components here of the of the assimilation. Oh, okay, I will not show it. Um, we have different uh, ways in which you can compare the the observed and simulated uh, uh, variables. One way is taking the difference and uh, putting it to the square. Um, and making this, in, including this into the objective function. You can also make it higher. You can, all, you can give different weighting factors to each of the, each of the components. That's very significant in terms of, of uh, making an assessment of how much you, your confidence you have on a certain product or another. So by, by looking at, uh, at how much weight you give to one component, you're also saying, okay, I, this one, is uh, highly relevant, or this one is not so not so much. In our cases, if you think about that, the snow products might be very very um, precise. Then you can give much more emphasis on the on the snow products, or even than more even more than the than the discharge, if, if that's the case. Mm, also, we've included the penalization of the update variable. So, if you increase the the changes of the of these variables, then you're also including it to the objective function. And this is contributing to somehow create a trade-off between how much you want to change a variable and how much you you look into the agreement of a of a, another one. I hope I answered your question. No. Okay. 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 I'm really sorry. Nothing short. Um. Um, in the second round, one of the three chairs of our ethics initiative is great to have her here. I was sent to her three weeks longer, which is brilliant. Um, Try to resume. And I'm looking forward to your talk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. So I think this is a transition talk to. Um, uh